Is this safe to eat? We sometimes see strange dots on our potatoes and wonder if we should just throw them away. Here are 10 eat or toss facts. Did you know that every year, 119 billion pounds of food is wasted only in the United States? To put it in perspective, this number means nearly 40% of all food in America is wasted. People throw away food if they don't have confidence in the ingredients. They're being cautious and it makes sense, but what if the food is safe to eat and only looks weird? The first item on the list is beef. When it comes to meat, people naturally get extra cautious. Imagine you buy some raw beef in the store. Later on, you realize it's got some brown spots. If you toss it immediately, hear me out. This is normal. In fact, you can see brown layers also inside the beef. Bright red color equals fresh meat, huh? Not necessarily. When the meat is first cut, it's maroon. If the meat is quickly vacuum packaged, it will keep that shade. But if the meat is exposed to air for like 15 minutes, then oxygen will cause a change in the look to red. The redness can turn brown when the biochemical reaction starts. This can take a few hours. Workers at the grocery stores grind the meat several times a day to achieve that bright red color because they know consumers are cautious about maroon looking beef. If the beef is wrapped in an oxygen permeable plastic, it turns bright red after exposure to oxygen. As long as the meat smells and feels fresh, and if it's been stored properly, it should be safe to eat. Have you ever come across dark lines under a shrimp shell? This one has a similar story to beef. Black lines on your shrimp's flesh are related to a natural phenomenon. They gradually occur after shrimps are taken from the water. Meat is exposed to oxygen, and the blackness gets more visible over time. Here also, the pattern of the animal itself can be a factor. These black lines can be a naturally occurring discoloration on the shrimp. Think of cats. They also have different color patterns, but they're the same in terms of species. Next time, you can conduct a mini experiment in your kitchen. Put a couple of shrimps side by side and observe the mild differences in the shrimp's color patterns. Shrimp will have a distinct bad odor when it's no longer edible, so if it smells and tastes fresh, don't toss it. Should you eat moldy yogurt? That green substance on the surface doesn't look appealing at all, but if you scoop it out, you seem to have clean yogurt underneath. The short answer is toss it. The mold could be seen on the top only, but it has probably gone deep, not to mention that it'll taste bad. Many molds are harmless, but some produce toxic substances. Green mold is a type of penicillium. Does this word sound familiar? That's the same type of mold used in the antibiotic penicillin. Don't get too excited. Eating moldy yogurt won't magically cure bacterial infections. It only spoils your dairy product. In 2013, there was an outbreak related to one line of yogurts. The company handed the products to stores as usual. After some time, they received customer complaints. They said that the yogurt looked like yogurt soup and tasted really old. Turns out that a type of fungus probably released some carbon dioxide. It made the product fizzy and bloating. Blech. The company and another independent scientist both said that this fungus in question wasn't usually harmful to people. Yet, more than 200 people reported becoming affected by it. So, these sorts of things can still happen. You should trust your spidey sense. If you've ever been lucky enough to see some mold in a freshly opened package, reach out to the manufacturer. You'll potentially save others from facing the same scenery by notifying the company about a systemic issue and preventing potential future product waste. Plus, the company probably wants to make amends and either reimburse your sad yogurt with a happy one, or better, they'll give you coupons for free products. Why do avocados sometimes...
I'm gonna carry on with another form of potato. Not because I love every version of potato and I can eat it in all meals from breakfast to dinner, but because I wanna know. What are those brown spots on potato chips? Should we eat or toss them? Consider these as minor imperfections. They don't affect the safety of the chip. They're there again because of the bruises they get or as a result of frying. Sometimes you see that your garlic is trying to make more garlic out of itself. Yep, it has sprouted. The question is, is it okay to eat sprouted cloves or should you toss them? If the green sprout is in the center of the garlic clove, that's fine. Be aware that the taste of the garlic will be stronger than it usually is. It will still be perfectly okay in a cooked meal since it'll be alongside other ingredients. The taste shouldn't be that harsh. Can we eat an apple with worms? Most people can't even stand the idea of accidentally eating an apple with a worm, but that's a cultural thing. So the answer is yes, we can eat it. After all, worms add a little protein to the fruit. These animals don't carry any harmful parasites. They make their way into the apple. The entrance point of the fruit might have an off flavor since it got sort of rotten in time. Besides the taste, the rotten part is all safe to bite. What might not be so safe is eating the fallen apples though. Those have probably been hanging out on the ground for quite some time. This period might be enough for the harmful bacteria from the soil to sneak into the apple. There were some cases where people experienced health issues by drinking unpasteurized apple juice made from dropped apples. Yeah, the ones that interact with unhealthy bacteria. From the iconic golden fries to a broken ice cream machine, here are 10 fast food secrets that the fast food industry doesn't really want you to know. Ah, chicken nuggets. Those golden crispy bites you can get from fast food chains. They're even on the menu of school lunches. What if I tell you that they aren't actually made entirely out of chicken? Researchers took chicken nugget samples from unnamed fast food chains and analyzed them. They said that one sample, for instance, contained only 40% and another 50% of meat. The rest? Well, you're eating mouthfuls of things like fat, connective tissue, and bone spicules. Many fast food companies grind the meat with that stuff. They make mechanically formed orbs of chicken parts. Why? Perhaps it's because this method is cheaper and more profitable. Millions of restaurants worldwide have chicken nuggets on their menu. So scientifically, it's not fair to say all nuggets are made this way, but a lot of studies imply so. The more the meat is processed, the more you lose the good stuff, like vitamin B6 and B12. The bitter truth is that companies add stuff, such as sodium, to the mixed paste. Sodium is added to get a better flavor. It's one of the ingredients that makes nuggets so yummy. Our bodies need sodium, but not too much of it. Unfortunately, most junk food contains more than our bodies can handle. So it might be a safe option to avoid eating these sorts of foods frequently. Chains dip their nuggets into tempura batter and fry them in hydrogenated oil. That's also not a green light regarding health, but this is how they catch the golden tint. They put additional stuff in nuggets. What about grilled chicken? In recent years, we've seen brands highlighting grilled chicken as a healthier option. Research has been done about grilled chicken too. And the same approach is applied here. Take chicken samples from iconic fast food companies and send those to labs for analysis. The results show that companies are misleading people by advertising these products by labeling them as healthy, natural, and 100% chicken breast. In reality, a couple of things are added to the meat to make it tender and juicy. Plus, these additives make it easier to cook the meat, freeze, and transport it, and reheat it later without losing too much moisture. The drawback of all these additives is that they affect the nutritional value of the chicken breast. These ingredients aren't the healthiest for us. We should especially watch out for three things. The first one is again, sodium. Fast food samples had seven to 10 times more sodium than home cooked chicken breast. Imagine you have a cheeseburger, but you say no to yourself and try to pick a less harmful menu item. Yet, some chicken sandwiches have the same amount or even more sodium than a cheeseburger with medium fries. The second thing you need to watch out for is phosphate additives. These additives allow the protein to conjoin more water. This means the white meat in the sandwich will appear juicier to you. 
Any word you see in the ingredients section that contains FOSS is a phosphate additive, so it's best to avoid them. The last thing you should avoid is sugars and starches, not just in grilled chicken, but pretty much in all fast food products. Oh, that's hard to digest, I admit. Cornstarch, sugar, malt, they come with grilled chicken breast. Buns and even some fries have sugar too. Everywhere I look, it's sugar. You see, home-cooked chicken has zero grams of carbs, but the study samples had added sugar and up to 10% of the calories in the chicken breast comes from there. So what's the moral of this story? If you're a health-conscious diner, you should maybe go for other options. There are secret recipes from companies like KFC and Coca-Cola. No company wants to share the ingredients that make their food irresistible, but with a little research, you can decipher many things. You want to know the secret of McDonald's fries? It's written on their website. They add beef flavoring to the frying oil. This may sound weird, but apparently, that's a known practice amongst chefs and restaurants. Duck fat has also been used as a flavor, for example, in high-end restaurants. I'm a fries lover, so I added another fact about fries. Sadly, they're even saltier than you think. Experts suggest that a grown-up should consume at most 2,300 milligrams of sodium daily. Guess the McD's large fry sodium number. At least 400 milligrams. Classic fries from Burger King have 732 milligrams. And Five Guys take the level even higher with 962 milligrams of sodium. Next time, maybe you can ask workers to go easy on the salt as a solution. Picture this. You're in a hurry, but your tummy says, feed me or I'll affect your mood and make life miserable for you. For a quick snack, you enter a fast food chain restaurant. You order your favorite burger. It looks and smells as if it's just been taken from the grill and served. Nope. They have different types of grills designed for this that can cook meat super quickly. Sorry to bear the bad news, but those perfect grill marks on your burger aren't real tools. The factory adds them. If you want to know how clean an eatery is, look under the ice chute of the soda machine in places where you can get your own drink. There you go, inspector. You solved the case. Various studies say that if such machines aren't cleaned correctly, dirty, contaminated ice can lead to some health problems. There could be mold or bacteria there. Ew! The process of cleaning ice machines isn't easy. The same thing applies to ice cream machines, too. Rumor has it that those ice cream machines aren't out of order. Employers just cannot find time to clean them properly. Now, what's the best time to get a good and fresh meal? Here are two opinions, and they both have solid reasonings. The first team recommends avoiding ordering grilled food in chains from 7 to after midnight. Many former employees say that sometimes they had taquitos or hot dogs prepared at around 4 or 5 a.m., but kept waiting to serve them till around midnight. That's not healthy. The other team says you should order between 11 a.m. and 1 p.m. or between 6 p.m. and 8 p.m. to get the freshest meal. Since it's going to be around lunch and dinner time, there'll be circulation and you can get decent food. Fast food companies have marketing, design, and psychological tricks to lure you in and make you order. Yet, they don't want you to stay inside for too long. If you were dining in mood lighting, you know under dim lamps and candlelight, you would take your time to eat. As the name suggests, you should be fast like your food in chain restaurants. They have fluorescence and they're in full light. Similarly, the floors and tables have reflective surfaces that make food look nice and bright. Plus, music is usually fast and loud. It's done to prevent you from spending hours there. Yet, they want you to take advantage of the first 20 minutes after your purchase. The faster you eat, the longer it will take you to feel full. Scientists say it takes about 20 minutes for our stomachs to inform our brain, okay, now I'm full. It's a good idea to eat in a clean area, but most of these companies are using cleaning products that have super strong chemicals. Assume that the staff clean the place at the end of their shift. They wipe down the soda machine and grill surface, and then you showed up early the next day. You may get some of that chemical residue on your food compared to other customers visiting the place later in the day. The vegan patty may not be 100% vegan. I'm talking about the grill, not the meat itself. In most of the chains, vegan burgers are cooked on the same grill as meat burgers. 
Do you have fast food chain secrets you want to share? Tell them to fellow Brightsiders in the comments. There's a dangerous dish that can poison you when prepared incorrectly. Everyday food like honey and cashew can be harmful too in certain conditions. You should know these facts before you eat some products. Have you ever chewed the seeds when eating an apple? Then you know that unpleasant taste the seeds have. That's because of cyanide. Don't be alarmed yet. The seeds have a protective cloak covering them. That's why cyanide doesn't enter your system if you accidentally swallow the seeds. Better be cautious though. Even small doses of cyanide can result in rapid breathing and more extreme and unpleasant results. Another danger lurking in your kitchen is potatoes, the ones with sprouts and green spots. Cutting off the green parts or sprouts solves the problem only visibly. The toxic substance called glycoalkaloid may have already spread through the whole potato. This substance turns some parts of a potato green for some reason. It's a sign for you. Eating this kind of potato can cause nausea, headaches, and other consequences. Are you a bubble tea fan? Then maybe you're familiar with cassava, aka tapioca. This is a root veggie, and it's cultivated in South America. It's also often used to make cakes and chips. It can be either sweet or bitter. It's common for root and tuber varieties of cassava to contain toxins. Tapioca must be prepared properly before you consume it. If it's served incorrectly or eaten raw, the consequences are pretty serious. But when it's processed correctly, it's delicious and safe to eat. Elderberries are known as a supplement to boost your immune system and help your body fight a cold or the flu. This medicinal plant needs to be handled and prepared with care too. If you eat unripe berries, they can do more harm than good. Here comes lectin and cyanide. These chemicals can cause stomach problems, for instance. This one makes me sad more than any other thing on the list. And this list includes a lot of healthy products. Anyway, here I spell it out. Popcorn. There are many studies saying that microwave popcorn is harmful for you. First, you consume the chemicals used in packaging. There are also flavoring additives that aren't healthy. Now remember that moment when you open the bag and hot popcorn smelling air goes up into your nose? It can lead to irreversible lung damage. For instance, there's a diagnosis named popcorn lung. A chemical used to provide microwave popcorn with its buttery flavor is related to that diagnosis. What can you do? Choose other packaging options or invest in an air popper. Air popped popcorn has only 90 calories and less than one gram of fat. Yay! Number six is honey. Honey is a sweet liquid made by, I'm joking, but do you know that natural honey is dangerous to eat if the amount is more than a teaspoon? It has a toxin with a hard to pronounce name. To get rid of this toxin, honey has to go through a pasteurization process. Let's move on to cherry pits. If you don't chew or crunch them, you'll probably be fine. Yet, keep in mind that these pits contain prusic acid, and this stuff is poisonous. What about ackee fruit? It's the national fruit of Jamaica, and it turns out unripe ackee contains a poison called hypoglycin. Ackee fruit must be fully ripe if you want to eat it. In other words, this fruit should open up by itself. Once it's ready to be picked up, it'll split wide open. No to the highly toxic pink flesh or black seeds, and yes to the delicious creamy pulp near the seeds. Eating this fruit incorrectly can cause Jamaican stomach sickness. Fugu is the Japanese word for puffer fish and the dish prepared from it. What's interesting about this dish is that it can be the last dish in your life if you don't prepare it properly. This fish contains a very powerful toxin that's very dangerous to humans. A single fish has enough poison to harm 30 people. Because of this, Japanese chefs undergo years of training to get a special license. Despite all precautions and preparations, fugu still sometimes becomes the last meal for some people. Would you take that risk? Perfect ciders, cashews. They can also be very risky to eat when they're raw. You probably get cashews from stores with raw cashew labels, but they aren't 100% raw. Before they find their spots on the shelves, they're processed with steam to remove a toxin called erushiol. Cashew shells contain this toxin, 
What would happen to you if you ate these nuts raw? A dangerous allergic reaction if you have a tendency to allergies. This depends on your sensitivity to poison ivy. Speaking of raw food, raw kidney beans are risky too. They contain a toxin called lectin. This one can give you stomach aches and other digestion-related issues as a bonus. All you need is to swallow four to five raw beans to experience these side effects. Red beans are rich in plant-based protein, essential vitamins, and minerals. Cook them correctly to enjoy these goodies. For this, keep dried red beans on the stove for at least 10 minutes. Boiling them for a shorter time and at a lower temperature can actually increase their toxicity. Beans can become even more toxic than if they are consumed raw. So yeah, a minimum of 10 minutes at high temperatures. Eating too many untreated bitter almonds can cause many unpleasant symptoms and health issues. Rhubarb leaves are a bit tricky too. You can eat the stalk, but don't munch on the leaves. The leaves contain oxalic acid, which ties to calcium. This makes it harder for the body to absorb the needed amounts of calcium. Mushrooms. For plenty of people, pizza and pasta wouldn't be so great without mushrooms. We all know that mushrooms are kind of unpredictable, especially if they grow in the wild. Here are two of the most dangerous ones, the death cap and the destroying angel. Star fruit is a risky choice for people with sensitive kidneys. If you're one of them, you might want to keep this fruit out of your meals. Regularly functioning kidneys can filter out the toxins star fruit contains. Otherwise, the toxin will hang around and cause some problems there. The next product on the list is nutmeg. If you find that nutty flavor super nice like me, hear me out before adding it everywhere. Small amounts of nutmeg are fine and healthy, but if you, let's say, eat spoonfuls of nutmeg, it can cause problems. Even with two teaspoons, knock knock, you get poisoned. Canned tuna can be a lifesaver. It's not pricey, it's a good source of protein, and with its help, you can prepare a delicious meal quickly. No cooking, just lettuce, bread, and a few more ingredients. There you go. How about three to five times a week? And you might experience a side effect called mercury poisoning. Now, this is related to how much and what type of food you consume. Canned tuna contains mercury, and that's why eating too much of it can lead to mercury poisoning. Medical advisors say that every kind of fish has some level of mercury. But that level differs from one species to another. For example, canned tuna has relatively high levels of mercury. Obviously, seafood is a great source of omega-3 and other things that are essential to our brain and good health. To stay safe, experts advise people to choose low-mercury seafood. Here's an interesting fact related to this. To get the most omega-3 fats from your canned tuna, choose water-packed fish instead of oil-packed. In oil-packed cans, the oil mixes with some of the tuna's natural fat. You open the can and drain the oil, and some of the fish's omega-3 fatty acids also get drained. But water and oil don't mix. Water-packed tuna won't lose its omega-3 fats. You can add some oil and dressing after you open the can. It's the first day of the apocalypse. The internet collapsed, logistics chains broke down. Outside your house, the world is living and breathing chaos. You need to think fast. Hmm. You gotta make sure your provisions will last until who knows? First off, make sure to stockpile your share of pemmican. It's like a beef jerky with a lot of extra nutritional value. Pemmican is an invention of the indigenous people of North America. They depended on pemmican during harsh winters or when resources were scarce. It lasts long and it's easy to carry, the essence of survival food. It doesn't look the yummiest, but it can last up to five years if stored properly. This pemmican stuff is kind of perfect for the apocalypse, since it will give you a highly nutritional meal. A 2.2-ounce bar will give you around 300 calories, but here you get three for the serving of one – dried meat, berries, and even sugar. And you won't have to eat a lot to feel satiated, since it gives your body an array of nutrients, from proteins to carbohydrates. I know you'll miss them, but don't grab those chocolate chip cookies you love. You need an alternative called ship's biscuits. But you can't find them in the supermarket. You gotta bake them yourself. These were literally the cookies that sailors ate during long voyages at sea. 
A ship's biscuit can go a lifetime without going bad. There are records of biscuits that lasted over 80 years. Hmm. The deal is that when sailors went to sea, they didn't know exactly when they would set foot on land again. So they needed to be ready food-wise. Or else they could, you know, starve. Bakers came up with this simple recipe. These cookies are mostly made out of salt, flour, and a bit of water. But the secret here is that the slow baking method takes all the moisture out of it. The little holes on top help to get the moisture out during the cooking process. A medium-sized person can survive on 8 chips biscuits a day. But there was a downside. These cookies were so dry that one might break their teeth while eating them. And extra attention is advised since there could be bugs hidden in the holes on top. So, before munching on those cookies, make sure to shake the pests out of them. Ever heard of a soup you can carry around? Well, portable soup is an ancient secret that needs to make this list. Portable soup is hard and condensed. It's a type of solidified broth, like a bouillon, made essentially of meat. You need to cook it slowly, with any type of meat high on collagen. While cooking the meat, it will release its taste in the water in the pot. After about 18 to 24 hours of reduction, you'll get a gelatin-like nutritional substance. When this cools down, it turns into a plaque that you can cut down into smaller tablets. To eat it, you just need to find some hot water and put the meat tablet inside of it. It would release all the condensed nutrients in it, giving you a warm, hearty, and highly nutritional meal. If you attempt to risk your life and go outside to buy provisions, don't forget white rice. This variety of rice can maintain its nutrient content and flavor for up to 30 years. White rice is better than other varieties, such as brown rice, because of their natural oils. Now, let's say it's been a year into the apocalypse. You've gotten used to your new lifestyle at this point. You go outside to hunt for some fresh meat, but uh-oh, you run into a bear. But since your nutrition is up to date, you have all the energy you need to escape it. And you can thank Kamut for that. This ancient grain contains up to 40% more protein than modern wheat. And it's richer in zinc, magnesium, selenium, and healthy fatty acids. It's not called high-energy grain for a random reason. It's easy to digest and provides more energy than regular wheat. Quick thought here. While we're speaking about survival food, we're not just thinking about things to fill your stomach. We need to think in nutritional terms as well as psychological ones. Which means jello! It may sound superficial, but don't underestimate the need for comfort food during the end of the world. Since it's made out of an industrialized powder, it lasts for a pretty long time. Plus, it's a source of collagen. This will help your bones to remain sturdy. Make sure your pantry has salt and sugar. Salt has been used since humans discovered it helps to preserve the shelf life of meat and stuff. That's why Egyptians used it in their mummification processes, so it would slow down the decaying process. Now, sugar can be stored for an indefinite period of time. Make sure to get a top-quality refined sugar, though, and store it somewhere without any type of strong smell since it absorbs the scents around it. Both sugar and salt keep bacteria and mold from growing. Now, keep in mind, moisture is one of your number one enemies in the apocalypse, even worse than zombies, perhaps, simply because moisture allows for bacteria and mold to prosper, and these guys end up eating all your food. Two years into this whole chaos, you figured out your way around food. When it all started, you bought a bunch of fresh veggies and dehydrated them. By dehydrating food, you still get all the nutrients, but they last for much longer. Plus, they reduce in size quite significantly, which makes storing them much easier. You didn't forget about peanut butter, of course. Peanut butter is highly caloric, plus they are your best treat at this point. Now I know what you're thinking, I can go without candies, but how will I survive without milk? Well, you don't have to. Instead of regular milk, make sure you get tons of powdered milk. You can even vary a bit and buy powdered coconut or even almond milk. To prepare them, you just need to mix it with a bit of water. And of course, coffee is a big survival food. It lasts a long time, although it won't bring you much nutrition. Coffee does have its share of antioxidants, which will help with a longer life. Plus, it helps with your brain's health, preventing dementia. You should get your share of canned food. 
beans, vegetables, even fish. Make sure you get some black beans, as they're high in iron. You need to have a sturdy immune system, since there won't be many doctors around, or they've turned into zombies. Canned pink salmon is a must-have in your apocalypse pantry. It's got a bunch of those omega-3 fatty acids, which will help with your brain and your heart health. It can last up to 6 years if stored correctly. And you gotta think about oats here. Oats are one of the world's healthiest foods. A bowl of oatmeal for breakfast can help you feel full longer, which is a great ally when food is being rationed. Rolled oats are simple to make and can be eaten without cooking, simply by letting them sit in water overnight. Now, corn. Flint corn is one of the best for long-term storage. It makes a pretty good cornmeal. You can even grind it and make a mean tortilla, in case you start to miss those Mexican night outs. It's best to store it whole and grind it only when you cook it, for durability, of course. Now, unfortunately, popcorn has more moisture than other varieties of corn and is not the best candidate for long-term storage. Let's just say popcorn doesn't make it into the apocalypse. Which leads us to another point. None of this will work if you don't know how to store your survival food. You need to create a storage location that is cool, dark, and dry. This can extend the shelf life of your food for up to 30 years. For the dehydrated stuff, you need to store it in airtight containers. Air is kind of a bad guy here, since it helps to oxidize a bunch of stuff. Most bacteria in our food need air in order to thrive. So if we cut out the air, this means more food for us. Bet you've never heard of corrugation. It's a system that may lie hidden in your pantry right now. Ever notice those bumps on food cans? That's exactly what they're called. And they're not just for aesthetics. First off, they make the can extra strong. That's because they can help it from cracking during the manufacturing process. Plus, these corrugations come in handy during delivery, acting like a shield to make sure there's no spillage. They're also useful in the long run because they help keep the cans in their original shape. Even when things get too hot or too cold, these corrugations let them breathe a bit. They expand and contract without breaking the metal. You may not notice any cracks on regular cans, but even the tiniest of openings can leave a way for nasty bacteria to get in contact with the food. Not to mention, they create this little air gap, so when you pop the can open, everything slides out smoothly, without you having to put in that much effort. You know what also doesn't require much effort? Hitting that subscribe button and liking this video. You know there's a plant out there that's so eager to reach the sun, you can hear it grow? Rhubarb, just before it's picked from the fields, soaks up all the sun rays it can get to make glucose. After this sunbathing session, it gets transported to dark sheds. Inside, it keeps on growing and uses the stored glucose as fuel. Nothing out of the ordinary so far, but in that dark, cozy, and warm place, rhubarb starts acting weird. That environment pushes the plant to stretch itself out in hopes it will find sun rays again. It happens so fast that you can actually hear the buds and stalks making noise as they pop open. To make sure this process goes smoothly, there's no light allowed. If light hits the rhubarb at this point, it will start photosynthesizing again and go bitter. Speaking of everyday groceries, you might have noticed that veggie bags come with some green stripes. Know that it's a sneaky optical trick. Those stripes fool our eyes into believing the veggies look way greener than they are. And it's not just veggies that get this special packaging. Oranges are often sold in red mesh bags for the same reason. Lemons? They go for yellow or green bags for that same pop of color. If your cooking skills aren't that good and you're just afraid you're going to mess up dinner yet again, stick to mushrooms. That's because they're almost impossible to overcook. Unlike other vegetables that turn into mush when overcooked, Mushrooms are way more resistant. They've got this interesting substance called chitin, a molecular structure that works like an armor. So you can cook them forever. They won't burn. 
Donuts don't have holes in them because it's easier for you to pick them up. If you've ever tried to make them at home, you might have noticed that when you fry the dough, the outside gets done quickly, thanks to the hot oil. If you want the inside to look just as good, you have to keep it in the oil way longer, but then the outside would get too brown. Thanks to that middle hole, the heat gets to both sides equally, cooking up a flawless donut. Here's how that small piece of paper makes it into your fortune cookie. First, they bake these cookies flat like pancakes. Then, while they're still warm and bendy, they sneak in those tiny messages. As the cookies cool down, they toughen up and keep their shape, trapping the fortune inside like a tasty time capsule. One legend has it that these Asian treats were initially intended to help people send all sorts of secret messages without causing any suspicion. Here's a little tip for whenever you're buying lunch at a fast food place. Skip the word extra when you're ordering. The moment you speak that term, you're tempting the employees to charge more. Instead, go for something like a little more please when you're getting a special burrito bowl. According to a UK study, cheese is the most stolen of foods worldwide. It's estimated that around 4% of all cheese just vanishes from stores. And no, it's not mice doing the stealing, it's people. Why? Because cheese is becoming more and more valuable. The price of cheese is constantly going up, and sneaky thieves are trying to make easy money by simply taking it from the racks. It's not just cheese, though. Other interesting items on the thieving list include fresh meat, chocolate, and seafood. Ferrero, the company behind those luscious jars of Nutella, needs about 25% of the world's hazelnuts every year. So if you think about it, one in four hazelnuts ends up in a chocolatey jar. The manufacturers get the nuts from Turkey, Italy, and Chile, making sure they get them delivered from both the northern and southern hemispheres to keep things fresh. Nutella's impact on the economy is even bigger than you'd imagine. Because of this demand, the price of hazelnuts went through the roof. In 2014, a frost hit Turkey's hazelnuts, supply got halved, and prices were even higher. Now, even places like New Jersey are trying to grow those Nutella-worthy nuts. When you imagine someone trying to sneak something into space, your first thought wouldn't be a sandwich. But back in 1965, during a Gemini mission, astronaut John Young brought a corned beef sandwich on board, going against NASA rules. He hid it in his spacesuit pocket before blastoff. About two hours into the five-hour trip, he went to the mission commander and offered him this unlawful treat. The commander, being a good sport, took it, and they shared a quick, savory moment. He even put the unfinished sandwich in his own spacesuit pocket to avoid crumbs making a mess of the spacecraft. Meanwhile, the official NASA-approved food was waiting patiently in a box nearby. Surely, radishes aren't your first pick when it comes to salad ingredients, but they have quite an interesting history, too. These mustard, broccoli, cabbage, and cauliflower cousins have been grown and eaten for longer than you'd imagine, even before the Romans were famous in ancient Egyptian times. In fact, radishes were used as currency for the people who built the pyramids, alongside onions and garlic. You'd think the English are champions when it comes to drinking tea, but you'd be wrong. Turkey is in fact the tea capital of the world. Every Turk drinks an average of 1,300 cups of tea each year. On a regular day, they're sipping on three to five cups, but when winter hits, they can reach 10 cups a day. Locals claim tea is like a social custom for them. It's more than just a hot beverage. It's an excuse to sit down, enjoy the atmosphere, and connect with loved ones. When it comes to types, black tea is preferred. There might be a magical drink hidden in your fridge. It's tonic water, and it might be able to glow in the dark. If you're curious, test it out with some ultraviolet light. The secret behind this glow is pretty simple. Tonic water has quinine, a chemical that lights up under certain conditions. Quinine was used back in the day to treat certain health problems. 
The stuff was so bitter that some people started mixing it with sugar and soda water. In simple terms, things glow because they absorb light energy, gets all excited, and then releases it as visible light. Quinine in tonic water absorbs and releases energy, making your drink look like it's from a fairy tale. There's an interesting connection between what we hear and what we taste. Scientists investigated and found that people worldwide link certain sounds with specific flavors, and they call it cross-modal correspondence. High-pitched sounds match up with sweet and sour tastes, while the lower, jarring sounds go hand-in-hand -hand with bitterness. If it's staccato, think crunchy, and if it's smooth and flowing, think creamy. Some even found music that can enhance the taste of chocolate. In this study, when people listened to a high-pitched sweet soundtrack while eating chocolate, they thought it was sweeter than when they'd heard a lower, more dissonant soundtrack. 